Oh dear, that, <laughs> that didn't quite work too well, did it? It's a little, little Christmas Christmas opening thing, whatever you call it. It didn't work very well, never mind. It's only just come down the line, unfortunately. Uh, so I haven't had time really to, to check that out and put a little bit of Christmas music to it. Never mind, good morning to you. It's Saturday the 14th of December 2013. Chris Redden with this morning's live United Kingdom talk. Yes, this is the long show of the week. Long. Uh, if you saw the little thing on Facebook telling you we're about to start, you might have seen it said Saturday the the. Firth of December. So apologies for that. Something went wrong with the... um, uh, I typed in the wrong thing or whatever it is. Uh, Good morning to uh, Marge, who already sends in three messages this morning saying good morning. Good morning, Marge. Hope you were today. I've got my Christmas... One of my Christmas jumpers on today that I got from Primart. Very nice. Only £9.99. And it's a picture of uh, Santa at the bottom looking... He actually looks bemused. Sorry, I'm standing up away from the microphone here. Is that better? Um, He he looks rather bemused on my uh, Santa jumper. And there's a little tree up to the right of it. And then there's four socks hanging on the wall, blue, green, blue and green. And then there's a clock at the top which says six minutes to twelve. Reminds me of, reminds me of being a child, actually. Six minutes, six minutes to twelve. Do you remember that? When you were a child waiting, waiting for midnight as if something was going to happen. Nothing ever did, did it? That's because Santa knew you was awake. Yes. Sa- just a minute. San- Santa knows you're awake. He's not going to come down that chimney while you're awake, children. No. He waits till you think, oh, and you're sitting there in your bed, aren't you? Eh? And you're thinking, oh, I, I, I must stay awake, I must stay awake. And then, and then without you even realising it, ch- loving children all over the world, without you even realising it, he suddenly comes down that chimney. Yeah, I, I don't know how he gets the fire, the gas fire off the wall either. Don't ask me. Do I look like Santa Claus? No. But somehow he gets it. I know, I know you might not have a chimney. You've got gas central heating with radiators, have you? Well, he must come in the door then. Just because there's no chimney doesn't mean Santa isn't going to visit you. No. He will find a way in your house. He will. But not why you're awake. And it's pointless children trying to stay up all night. Because you won't do it. Eventually at some point you will fall asleep. Even if only for a couple of minutes. And in that time Santa will enter your house. And deliver presents for you. Yes. Don't wait up. You're not going to see him. He's very secretive. Very secretive, Sandra. Uh, one thing I was uh, just just looking at before I came on air today, I thought to myself, "Oh, you know, I wonder, I wonder how train sets are now." Because I, one, my favourite Christmas present of all time was an electric train set, which I got when I was sixteen, I think. And it was a Hornby train set with a little black engine called Princess Victoria. And I just had a little look on the Facebook. And I found this place called Diesel Depot Model Railways. Now, where? I don't know where they are, actually. Let me have a look. My account. Or maybe they're just online. I don't know. Oh, Diesel Depot Shop. Here we are. One minute. They are in Lancashire, which is a little bit too far away from me. And they sell all these diesel locomotives, you know, little model ones. God, they're so dear now. Look. For example, the BR-A1A stroke A1A diesel class 31 in British Railways green. DCC ready. I don't know what any of that means. To me, I look at this, you know, I'm I'm not a, a railway enthusiastic person. However, I like the look of little electric trains. I love them. And this, this is a green thing. Very good looking thing. 90 quid for one of those, dear. 90 quid. And they've got another one here, £83, £79, £54, £53. And these are just the, um, the locomotive, like the engine at the front. These are not the carriages or the row or the controller or anything like that. 
So it is quite an expensive thing to do, isn't it? I suppose you can still... Can you still buy train sets? There used to be um, a, a chain of stores. Let me see if they're still around. B Beaties, I think they're called. B-E-A-T-T-I-E-S. Oh. Nope, nothing. Beaties. Um... Oh, what would you call it? Trains. Trains? Oh! Whatever happened to Beat is the model shop. I remember them being really popular. Anyone know what happened? The whole chain went bust. Oh, God. Oh, that's a shame. BTs used to sell model railways, scale electrics, anything that was like little model that you could make. Gone bust. And it's a shame. That's because all the children now are sitting there in front of blooming computer screens. My nephew's the same, Jimmy. He's 16, coming to Florida with me in January. Looking forward to that. We are going to have a, such a fantastic holiday and we will cause chaos throughout the whole of Florida. My, myself and my nephew. He's one. He sits there on his computer game. So boring. Boring. So anyway, I've got my Christmas jump on. Oh, Sunday, you know I've been doing these little short videos. I've decided there won't be one on Sundays. The reason is, because of this show and how long it is, it's an hour long. By the time it gets up online, it's up only two hours. You know, it's like only a couple of hours before the Sunday one replaces it once we put the recording up. So there won't be a short video on uh, Sundays. OK. Righty ho. Now, you can join in if you want to at some point this morning if you are with us live. Now, if how do you know if you're with us live or watching a recording? Let me tell you now. Have a little look at your clock. Do you have a clock or a watch? No one have watches now, do they? The time is always there on your mobile phone. In my case, an iPhone 5. Wonderful phones, dear. Wonderful. So, if it's coming up to... Nine minutes past 12, okay, on Saturday, December the 14th, 14th, 2013, then you are indeed with us live. And you can join in the show. You can speak to me on the phone. That phone standing by for your inquiries, okay? Or you can... Um, Skype, if you've got Skype, in Skype as well. My Skype username is, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. That's a Skype username. Okay, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. If you've got Skype, click the add thing on there. I'll accept you and you can call in or just send an instant message up to you. There's also a phone number, a local London number. This is not a premium rate number. It is a local London number. OK, and the local London number is 020 8133 020-8133-6358. If you are abroad in another country other than the UK, you can also use that local London number. Uh, dial your international access code. Probably double O, but not necessarily. Check that first. Followed by 44 for the UK. Uh, 20813336358. Right, so once again, internationally, dial your international code, followed by 44. 20-8133-6358. Anything at all that you might want to um, uh, join in with this morning, then please feel free to do so. Uh, Marge, your Skype is working, dear. Your, mar your messages are coming through. Please do not worry. Uh, good morning to Shania on the Isley Widget. Yes, the Isley Widget. That's part of the UK. Have you heard of the Isley Widget? Yes, I S L E W I G H T. <laughs> Isley Widget. I S L E W I G H T. It's a lovely little island just in the south, tiny little place. And Shania's on there. She writes this morning Good morning, Chris. Haven't been around for weeks. 
Uh, she says, uh, been busy. Didn't think I would get to listen today as I have carnival things to do, but that's later. Well, you're here now, Shania. And that's all that matters, my darling. My also here this morning is someone on the phone. Who is on the phone? Troy. Who is it? Troy. Corey? Troy. Troy? Which Troy? Troy. Troy Banyard. Troy Banyard. Good morning, Troy. Hi, oh, you're right. And how are you? Where are you? I'm at home at the moment. Why is that? Doing nothing again? Just took dogs out. So oh, just... I've got you now, Troy. Troy. Yeah, I'm one... just watching you on YouTube. Oh, one of my <laughs> old one of my old Monday night regulars at the Black Cap. That's right. How old fantastic. Sandra. Let's have a little quick look at Oh dear, you're looking a little bit ropey now, aren't you, Troy? <laughs> Dear me, what happened to that lovely young boy who used to be dancing on the stage to YMCA? <laughs> oh, I don't know, I don't remember him. You do a lot with animals, don't you? Yeah. you got a... Uh, let me think right. Dogs, you, horses. you got a farm, haven't you? I've got everything, yeah. That's fantastic. I've, I've gone back to the Black Cap, did you know? Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. I ain't been in there. I went there um, Halloween night and it was shit. Halloween. <laughs> Just a minute. I've got. I've got something for that. Just a minute. Halloween. <laughs> a lot of people look as scared of me as soon as I looked there. Try not to swear too much on here, my darling. All right, because it is live to millions and millions of people all over the world. At least seven. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come down and see you when you're next there. Yeah, do. I'm not there. Um, <coughs> next Friday. Okay. But I'm there the Friday after. I'm also not... You like... Ca- I can't remember, did you... No, you didn't come to the karaoke, did you? No. No, because I've started doing that there on a Sunday as well. So I do Fridays and Sundays, but not this weekend, because they've got a big charity event on there, Troy. OK, my love. So what is this? You, you, you've got a farm or, or what? What, what, what is I've it got you... horses, 40 acres. And is this your job? No. I used to work for pets at home, but I retired on last Saturday. Oh, why is that then? Couldn't be asked to work no more. OK, do, do, <laughs> where, where do you make your... How do you live, then? What, what do you do? Uh, I'm just hiding on now. You're better from the doll. But what about all your animals? How do you, fi- how do you afford to feed those? Because it's an expensive thing to do, isn't it? Uh, or do you I hire them out? Raw, raw food, so I think three for the butchers. Oh, right, yeah. And they're all on a raw diet, so that cost me nothing, really. And what about vet, vet bills, or, or can you well, deal with most stuff yourself, can you? I can deal with most stuff myself, but touch wood, not much goes wrong. OK. How many horses have you got? Uh, eight. Wow. <laughs> how, how how much is it to, to keep a horse? My sister's always wanted a horse. Um, the thing is, mine are I've got my own grazing now, forty acres, so right. it only pay it only cost me the rent of the the field. So, is that um, very expensive? Not really. No, it's about a uh, hundred pounds an acre. Um, ha- per year, a hundred pound per year. Yeah. So what you pay per acre? There's forty acres, so that's whatever that four thousand pounds. Grand is year. it? Not a lot. Four thousand? Yes, about that. Right. Christ, that's a lot of money, mate. Nah, it's cheap. Is it? And yeah, do, do you... you've got, um, if you've got pay stables, if you're in stables, yeah. you're looking at fifty five pounds a week. R- and then wow. you've got uh, all your feed costs on top of that. So that's expensive. That but how, I mean how do you afford to do that on, on such little money? Or do you do you hire them out or people? Uh, ride my on breed them? horses are breed dogs, so Ah, so you sell them on? Yeah, and I still um Okay. I do dog and cat grooming privately. I do like animals. You know I'm a bit of a vegetarian, don't you? Do you? Are you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, vegetables have feelings, you know. They don't have feelings. <laughs> I've pulled <laughs> loads of carrots out of the ground and there's just not, not a sound from any of them. Oh, I tried parsnips. This I've, I'm not successful at all with root vegetables. Really? Uh, <laughs> no. I'm a gardener, so I grow loads of Oh, yeah? Well, the root <laughs> vegetables, I don't know why they just don't do well for me. The carrots were tiny, minuscule. And the par- I did tried parsnips this year. Yeah. And I put them in... Really early, what, May? You want to put them in now, really, parsnips. Oh, really? Mm. Well, I, I bought them as small plants from the garden centre. Oh, right. Okay. Little, you want to put little, little, seed? Se- yeah, little seedlings. So I put them in, um, put these little plants in April, May, and they yeah, grew too. and they grew, and I thought, oh, they're doing really well. Uh, they grow loads of top. Right, yeah. And then this week... This week, I started... Let's let's see what happens. If I pulled one up, and no, they're... If you get some now, if you get some seed now and plant yeah. them now, You've, they'll, they'll germinate in over winter, and then that's when you'll get your parsnips, because they're a vegetable which should be planted now. Oh. And it's well, still really were, mild at the moment. I mean, I've got these, um, bees these, as well, honeybees. These parsnips were, were wide. 
okay they were quite wide like a normal parsnip but they were only about three i would say four or five inches deep and yeah. they didn't go into a point like where the points came down there were like three or four points and they twisted around each other yeah because that... you've got stones in the ground probably oh is that what it is yeah. Oh, so hit a stone and go all funny. Yeah. Same um, as a carrot. Also, I'm not quite <laughs> south facing here. It's like um, uh, I think I'm, I'm west facing as well. Uh, oh, yeah. Very successful with runner beans. Oh, they were so easy. Hundreds of them. Try I've got broad beans. You can plant them now. Broad beans. Okay. Yeah, they come up lovely. So, tell me what I could put in now. So you said parsnips. Parsnips. Put in now all your brassicas. Um, oh, broad beans. Uh, I've tried. Um, I've tried Brussels. Th- yeah, twice but they, now they're difficult anyway very um, difficult they flowered yeah what, what you've got to do they've got to be on, in undug ground in what undug ground oh really yeah because they don't like the root movement so you need to just have ground that's not been dug wait yeah they're just weed free and then just um plant them put a little hole in and plant them okay well i've got some... them so the wind don't blow them around Oh, hang on, I'll, I'll put that in. But the... try broad beans, they're great. They come up lovely. Broad beans. They're delicious, yeah. I've made notes of that. Thank you, Troy. All right. Absolute I'll pleasure speaking soon. to yourself. Thanks for calling in, Take all right? Okay, bye. Ta da. There we are, Troy. Yes, he used to come to um, uh, a place I worked at, the Black Cap. Well, I do work at now, the Black Cap in um, uh, Camden Town. How fantastic for someone to ring in who I haven't heard from for so long for that. That's wonderful. Um, oh, Marge, what are you moaning about now? You always got something to moan about, Marge, haven't you? Moaning about my collar not right. Do you want it out or in my collar? I don't know. I think it should be out with the bottom top top button done up with me uh, Christmas jumpers. Need a little bit light, a bit more light in there. Oh, by the way, Marge, I've got a, I bought a new background. Those of you that watch the show, um, uh, Marge thought it was rather dark in here. So I've got a new background, uh, which I got off eBay. Quite a nice colour blue that I'm going to be putting up next week, OK? Uh, to uh, sort of Im- improve a little bit of a uh, uh, thing behind there. Marge, you're sending in bloody messages all over the place, dear. Skype, Facebook, emails. Can you not stick to one thing? It's very, very confusing. Ah. Oh. Marge says, your sound is neat. It sounds like you're in an auditorium. Oh, well, I mean, I could, I could probably sell out the Albert Hall, to be honest, Marge, I could. <laughs> now, don't forget, once again, no Sunday videos, uh, because, you know, it, it's just too short between the time this one gets up there and the next one. So we are still doing uh, the short videos uh, every day. They're only two minutes long. And I've got a lot of messages about the little videos that come up. All right, so I'll read those out a little bit later on. Got to say good morning to Mike, who's in Brighton. Oh, well, hopefully we'll go down and visit soon. Good morning, Mike. Hope Brighton is doing well this day. I'm not keen on Brighton. I like Hove. I think Hove is quite nice, but I'm not so keen on uh, Brighton. Now, last night I did a, uh, a Christmas party in this place in Millbank. And um, uh, it's very, 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 uh, what would you say, posh? Posh, is it? Was it posh? Is it, no, expensive. Very expensive in this in this place in Milbank. It, Milbank. It's right next to the Thames and just a little bit along from uh, Big Ben and Westminster on that south side. Fantastic place. Oh, it nearly took me two hours to get to this place. And I've said to you before, one of the things I don't like being is late, OK? I tend to get to places far too early. I leave with ages and ages to go, right? So that I give myself plenty of time. My best mate, Ron, is completely opposite to me. He will leave at the last minute. And then if he's going to be late, he's like, oh, well, you know, I'll ring ahead and tell him I'm going to be late. Well, to me, not acceptable. And he does that for anything, whether it's an appointment, going to meet someone, anything at all. He he, what he does, he checks on his iPhone usually because he's got the and let me just turn this mobile phone off because it's buzzing away. and It's getting on my nose. Um, Yes, he's got an app on his iPhone, which I've got as well. The um, TomTom app, which shows where where all the traffic and all that is. It's brilliant. Costs you £23 a year. And 
you you switch it on and it tells you where the traffic is and it will try and take you around the traffic and usually very successful okay the only thing is if it's a long journey um anything more than an hour of course the traffic can change as you're on the journey right so for example yesterday um it was telling me that the traffic uh, delay was like 10 minutes. And if I was to leave at 6 o'clock... Uh, what time did I leave at? D -d -d I had to be there at 7, 6, 5. OK, I had to be there at 7. The journey with no traffic is about an hour. I gave it two hours, right? When I set off, it was telling me the journey would take an hour and 10 minutes. So according to the mobile phone, I would get there at 10 past six. That's for seven o'clock. Now, to me, that's not a problem, OK? Because once I'm there, I'm there. You know, if you was to book me to do your either DJ or karaoke or quiz or whatever, if you book me, I will be there on time. Unless there is some terrible disaster, like a load of traffic, right? OK, so I've set off and it's I've, OK, fair enough. Ten past six, that's all right. As the journey went on, <clears throat> it flashes up. There is now another delay. Um, take this route, it's quicker. So you hit a button and it goes another route. Well, as time goes on, I eventually got there at five to seven, five minutes ahead of my start time. Well, I say start time. I had to be there at 7, but I didn't actually start until 7.30. They also inbuild a little bit of time in the time you're supposed to start, so that if you're late, you, you cover for that. I already do that. So I got there at 5 to 7, so not late at all, and quite happy I got there. But do you see what I mean? If I had taken notice of the sat-nav, I would have been... Oh, actually, I would still be there on time because of their extra half hour that they give me. But I like to be there when I say I'm going to be there. So I always, always give some time. But nearly two hours to get there, honestly. It's traffic, you see. It was a, I, when I, If you leave here at five o'clock, then you're just asking for trouble, to be honest. If I was to leave at four, I would have probably got there at quarter past five or something like that but then again that's far too early of course the fact that i got there at um just before seven instead of before half past six meant that i didn't have to pay the parking meters anyway because it finishes at half six so i saved myself ding, four pounds oh which reminds me i haven't sent in the invoice yet oh my god let me make a large note of that two invoices to send <laughs> yes we want the money Send me the money! <laughs> so I must put those invoices in. Anyway, so this uh, Christmas do at Millbank, it was very nice. A couple of things. They all sat down, and lovely people, lovely people, they all sat down to this, this Christmas dinner, OK? So as I say, I was, I was to start at 7.30. Actually, about 10 past 7, people started walking in. So I thought, well, I'll put, put some background music on. And background music, for example, for a Christmas meal, is all like Christmassy stuff, you know. Ding, just in the background, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Actually, Mar just sent in a little audio email today with her singing Christmas carol on it. How fabulous. And we'll be hearing that later on during the show. Do not worry, boys and girls. It is on its way. And things like, you know, once in Royal David City and, and Christmassy type things like that. So you got that on quietly. And I says, um, I, I went up to met the lady, lovely lady. And uh, I says, um, uh, do you would just background music while you're eating? Yes, that will right, be OK. OK, then. So I'm sitting sort of kind of up and there down the end chatting away and all the tables are laid out and ready i looked at my watch and it's like 20 past seven i thought oh well they're going to be at least two hours now having dinner fine so that's that's okay well dear you know at eight fifteen, they were still sitting around standing around chatting and drinking weren't they and i thought my god it's going to be nothing for me to do tonight i'm still sitting there and then um eventually they came and sat down at the tables. I thought, right, well, I don't want to be sitting here kind of overlooking everyone. I've got nothing to eat. You know, I was aware of that. They hadn't said I would get a meal, so I took in a rather large bag of Doritos. Doritos. 
the che- the tangy cheese flavoured ones in the orange come yellow packet. Or was it orange? Orange packet. Tangy cheese family pack of Doritos. Okay. And a flask of tea. So I've put these Doritos under the sort of desk where I'm doing the, um, uh, like the DJ stand, while I'm doing it. And every now and again, I'd lean down and <laughs> have, have another mouthful of these Doritos. Very, very tasty. Uh, and a cup of tea, of course. They're now sitting down eating their meal. I thought, well, I don't want to be like kind of looking down at everyone eating. And they're looking at me. Oh, why is he sitting up there? So I spotted a little sofa on the other side of the room. Now, I've got to tell you, this was on the 28th floor of the Millbank Tower. The view from there is outstanding. You can see, because it's like on a corner, so you can see the whole of London from these two windows very high up. What a fantastic... I did take a photo last night. I don't know if I've got it here somewhere. Um... Oh, Mike, I've, apparently I've made your day, Mike, haven't I? I'm going to make your night as well at some point as well. Don't you worry about that, my love. Now, let me see. Have I got the photo of last night? Is it here? Do, do, do. And I had a very, very strange message from someone last night who looked like Sylvester McCoy. Oh, there's, there's a photo. Just a second. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this or not. Uh photo of it's all very complex here now what's that there let's try this um, um, um. okay one minute Bing! photo of me at the Millbank Tower how are we doing on here 1227 one second 27 Mill bank pick all right hello are you still there are you still there oh there we are you you can hear me i thought for one minute you couldn't hear me then yeah that's that's uh the mill me at the top of the Millbank tower last night you might see i've got my christmas jumper on and uh in the background you can see that's 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 the big tower at Vauxhall, and that got smashed into by a helicopter um was it earlier this year or maybe at the end of last year i can't remember now okay so there we are, the Millbank Tower. All right. And all the lights of London. That's, that was just one aspect of it. There were other um, uh, uh, kind of scenes that you could see that from. And it was, was, was rather brilliant, the scene that you could see from there. So I went and sat on the settee that was just over and kind of just sat there looking out the window playing with my mobile phone really that was our fate i thought well there'd be there'd be another hour and a half or so i didn't have to get up out of that seat until about 10 to 11 i mean yeah i wasn't bored at all really because i got my mobile phone i'm chatting to people on the mobile phone the background music's playing they're all happy having their dinner there's a couple of very loud people in there so that was all right and then about quarter to 11, they'd done some speeches and I got up and um, uh, just worked the sound for the microphone. And then they had their put in as well. So I, I hardly did. I, and, and it was all over by one o'clock. The biggest, the problem there was the sound levels were not very high. They've got the tiniest speakers I have seen on the entire planet. These speakers were no bigger than a CD. The, the, the kind of, the front of them were no bigger than a CD. You may notice I have a Barry Manilow CD to, um, uh, uh, to, to, to show you the size, okay? And you just, it just wasn't loud enough. Not only that, they had a cutout system so that if you did get it too loud, the sound would cut out. Well, it, it wouldn't go that loud anyway. Didn't go that loud, so complete waste. The only time the cutout light came on, and when there's a cutout light, you, you do get time to turn it down, right? So this light comes on, and if that light comes on, then you have to turn it down to get the light off again. Sorry, no, I got that wrong. That that's the norm. The normal thing is that you've got a red light that comes on. This was the other way round. So I had a big light next to me on the floor, right? If the light went out. That indicated to me that the sound level is too high 
and I would have to turn the sound level back down to get the light back on again. Get it? Right. So the only time this light came on was when some someone was shouting from the crowd. And I thought, my God, how low is this thing set? Anyway, so, but that, and, and that was the worst part of it. You could not turn the sound up. It's a beautiful venue, lovely staff, quite friendly. You know, not really my cup of tea. I wouldn't want my dude to, it, it was a little bit too perfect. You know, I'd rather go in some pub where it's all a little bit more homely. This was all a bit, you know, you know when the plates of food come out and everything's in the right position on the plate and, you know, the knives and forks were all perfect on the table. It's a bit sterile. Each table had some flowers which were all exactly the same as each other. A bit too sterile for me. You know what I mean? I'd, I'd, I'd have my do in a pub. Well, fun, you know, something, something like a like a nice cosy pub with a buffet. This was very nice, probably very very expensive, but too sterile for me. Um, so they finished the dinner, and I turned the music up as much as I could, and that was it really. Um, I'm afraid no one danced, no one danced at all, probably because. <laughs> Where they were talking so loud, they couldn't hear the music anyway. I, I was more of background music last night. And people came up and they asked for requests. Apparently, people were dancing around the corner, but I couldn't see them, you see. Couldn't see them at all. But they were dancing. And um, several people came up and said that they had a good time. And they apologised that there was no one dancing. But that's normally, quote, what this crowd are like. So that's fine. You know, if you're a DJ and not everyone dance, not necessarily that that's been a bad night. In fact, it wasn't last night. Everyone had a good time. The boss came up to me, um, asked me for my phone number, which wasn't I wasn't allowed to give him because I'd come for an agency. It's very, very rare that I work for an agency, but I had done on this occasion. And if you work through an agency um, uh, uh, like that, you cannot give your private phone number or email address or anything like that out you have to refer them back to the agency if you don't you'll never get any work from them again you see what i mean that is the rules you there's no way and it, you know he asked me about four times so i'm really really sorry if you want me you'll what you'll have to do is ask for me specifically at the agency okay um, but you're going to have to book through them because that you know that that's the agreement i mean it's fair enough isn't it you know um uh, end of the night came, one o'clock. Uh, the lady in charge, can't remember her name now, was it Liz? Might have been Liz. She came up to me, thanks me again, and um, off we all went. And I was at home, left there, got down in the lift, 28 floors it was, got down in the lift, about, uh, into the car about 10 past one, quarter past one, and I was home by quarter past two, nice early night for me. So that was my night last night. It was all right. You know, it was all right. L easy, easy, easy night. Really, really easy night that was. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, no dinner. For, there was no dinner for me, though. They also had a magician there. And um, he had a dinner. He got a dinner. He wasn't sitting at the tables with everyone else. They kind of put him on a little table at the side and he was having his dinner, this magician. And I thought, how comes I didn't get a bloody dinner then? What a cheek. I'm sitting there with my bag of Doritos. No dinner for Chris. The other thing, I didn't even actually see the magician do anything. What did he do? <laughs> but when they were clearing the tables, I did notice plates of chocolates. Little round things. Round, they were they, posh chocolates. You know, with chocolate around the outside and some sort of centre in the middle. And I saw one of the staff, she picked up this plate, she was taking it back out to the kitchen. She said, oh, I don't they want those? She said, oh, do you want them? Nice girl she was. Do you want these? I said, well, I'll have one or two. She said, hey, I'll have the plate. <laughs> so I had this plate of chocolates. I put that down on the chair and every now and again I shoved another one in my mouth. Well, it kept me busy. Oh, they were lovely. I bet they were expensive. Do you like chocolate? whole plate of ch chocolates I had last night. It's terrible, isn't it? All right, uh, Christmas vouchers. And that was my night last night. 
Very good. Tonight, I'm doing karaoke, Saturday, at the Laurie Arms in Hammersmith, OK? If you want to come down there. Laurie Arms, karaoke, Saturday, the 14th of December 2013. 9pm till 1am, free entry. Come and sing us your songs. Come and sing us your songs. Now, someone who has sing a song this week is Marge, who sent us in this little audio email. So let's have a little listen to see what Marge has got to say today. Hello, Chris. <laughs> I was bound and determined I wanted to send you a Christmas song. I've got a little bit of <clears throat> sore throat, and <laughs> I haven't sung in quite a while. I can sing when I really try. Plus, you know, me and my interest. But I I attached it to the end of this, this file, and if you, <laughs> your viewers can bear with it, I just wanted to sing a Merry Christmas song for you. I'm playing with my audacity sound recording <laughs> anyway here you go don't fall over dead <laughs> slavery are you listening in the lane snows are glistening a beautiful sight we're happy tonight walking in a winter wonderland gone way is the bluebird Wonderland In the meadow We can build a snowman And pretend that He is Parson Brown He said Are you married? We said no man But you can do the job When you're in town Later on We'll conspire As we dream By the fire To face and afraid The plans that we made Walking in a winter wonderland In the meadow we can build a snowman And pretend that he's a circus clown We have lots of fun with Mr. Snowman <clears throat> Until the other kitties knock him down When it snows, ain't it thrilling? Through the nose, it's a chillin' The Eskimo way Walking in a wonderland land <laughs> Walking in a winter wonderland Walking in a winter wonderland Oh, that is just horrible <laughs> Too do I Too terrible But it wasn't terrible, yeah. Marge It was very nice Thank you for sending me the Christmas carol we like Christmas carols. Thank you, Marge. Anyone else who wants to send in one of those, you can do that on the email if you want to. OK, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, right? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I've got a Christmas present this year from my accountant who sends me this. I've no idea what it is. It's a piece of plastic with, like, a serrated edge... And a rubber edge, and I don't know what it is. Whatever it is, is to be the most Chris expensive Christmas present I get this year. Christ, I think I send. I must send my accountant on four holidays a year. Absolutely, must send him on at least four holidays a year for the price this piece of this plastic thing is. I don't know what it is. Anyone I've got any idea? It it looks like the back end of a plane. You know the the ta not the is it the towel that thing that sticks up at the back of the plane? Anyone got any idea what this is? It's that shape. It's grey. One of the edges has got a bit of rubber. One of the edges is flat, and another edge has got like this serrated edge. Listen, I don't know what it is. <laughs> From my accountant. I should bloody well think he should send me something each year for the amount of money that I send him. Jesus. Got to read this out for you. It's a tweet. Now, I'm on Twitter. I, I must say, I, I don't use it that much, to be honest, Twitter. Um, but Tim, Tim Willett, who does a radio show on a community station, uh, Cambridge 105... Obviously had a listener call in or write in 
who complained about too much waffle. Too many people talking. Too, mu too much talking over the music. You know. Now, my idea of radio is that there's a guy talking in between the records, entertaining you as well as the music, right? And Tim got this email and he replied to the person, just told a listener complaining off too much waffle to listen to another radio station with more music on air. Don't mess with me. <laughs> Tim, I absolutely agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. Why do they, but there are... Uh, Countless, hundreds of radio stations you can listen to now, especially if you have an internet radio, a Wi-Fi radio. Fantastic. Highly recommend those. Anyone who wants to buy someone a present, get them a Wi-Fi radio. Hundreds and thousands of stations to choose from. But instead, people write little messages like that to the station they are listening to in the hope that it was going to change. Well, it isn't. This is what we do. I mean, can you believe I have had emails to this show telling me that why do I talk so much? Because it's a talk show, you idiot. It's a talk show. It, it's a funny thing to send. I mean, that, that, is, that is very funny to send. For someone to say, you know, for someone to say you talk too much on this, but this is a talk show, you idiot. There is no music other than me singing. Oh, Mike says, your accountant sent you a windscreen cleaner for ice. Is that what this is? Oh, yeah, of course it is, isn't it? You scrape it on the ice. <laughs> don't have to do that, dear. I have a garage. I have a garage. We don't, we won't, we need this. Do you know, this, I've got to tell, shall I tell you how much this bit of plastic has cost me? About £1,500. Shh. You would have thought he sent me something a bit better than that, wouldn't you? Huh? One half thousand pound my accountant charged me this year. Jesus Christ. I know, I know. There are accountants listening to this show at this moment saying, yeah, but look at all the money we saved you. Oh, dear. Yeah, well, I suppose that's true enough, isn't it? One half thousand pound. Dear me. Now, can I read some more of uh, these little messages? That have been coming. Marge uh, wants to know the e the uh, snail mail address. Yeah, there is a snail mail address. Oh, oh, it, which someone has sent something in, by the way. If you want to send in a card, Christmas card, or perhaps you know a small check, a small check for the amount of um, entertainment that you've taken from me this year, all free of charge, then you are welcome to do so. <laughs> I'm going to give you the snail mail address in a minute, but um, I've got this. Lovely little uh, card. And I've noticed more people are doing this now. Sending kind of photos as Christmas cards of themselves or, or their family, which is quite nice. And it says, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays and a Happy New Year. Love from Matthew and Heather Martins. And they are in Canada. And Matt sent me a message this week when I was going on about the weather here and then it had warmed up a bit. He said, well, you don't want to be in Canada at the moment. And I said, well, how, how cold is it in Canada? And he said it was uh, minus, minus 27 degrees centigrade. Minus 27 degrees centigrade. Well, rather you than me, mate. Oh, dear. I don't like the cold weather. We don't do skiing or anything like that. It's particularly awful falling over in that ice and what have you um so here's here's the uh address for any letters that you might want to send in chris reardon united kingdom talk c stroke o the two brewers b-r-e-w-e-r-s 114 Clapham High Street, C L A P H A M, London, S W 4, 7 U J, United Kingdom. Did you get that? No, you didn't, did you? Pay attention. I should read it, uh, especially for the Welsh, slowly. <laughs> Chris Reardon, United Kingdom Talk. C stroke O, the T 
two brewers, B R E W E R S, 114 Clapham High Street, C L A P H A M. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Have you caught up now? London, S W 4 7 U J. United Kingdom. All right. Hopefully that uh, get here uh, for the next show. Cool. Thank you, Marge. So the little videos uh, you've been watching this week, you can find those by subscribing or looking at my YouTube channel. And to find that, go to youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. That's where you'll find the daily short videos every day except Sundays. OK, once again, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. That's where you'll find the daily YouTube videos, usually between one and a half and four minutes long, usually two minutes. They're usually about two minutes long. And you get one every day. Could be anything. Could be a news story. Could be me and my mate. Could be me doing something funny. Never know. Different every day. I would appreciate if you could share those. If you think something's particularly good, share it on your Facebook wall, all right? Please. Thank you. And some comments have come in about those this week. Uh, first of all, on the subject of my Christmas jumper, because because viewers viewers to the YouTube channel have already seen these. Today's one, as I've showed you, my Father Christmas with the clock on the top. Rory from Ireland writes, Oh dear, with that haircut, your age is showing. I thought it was my granddad. How dare, what's wrong with my hair? You've got to keep it short because it's going bald in the middle. That's why, Rory. Dear me. Rather be bald than fat, Rory. Do you know what I'm saying? Eh? <laughs> Although I'm both. Really, aren't I? I did weigh myself before I came up the stairs today. 13 stone. It's a bit much, isn't it? What was I in... 15 years ago, I was 11 and a half. So it's not too bad, is it? All seems to be around your waist, though, doesn't it? Does anyone like fat people? Mike, do you like fat people? Or will I be rejected now? <laughs> Good morning to Carmel. Morning to Carmel. She's up in Lincolnshire. And she writes, the, ju the, the, the jumper is worse than the hats with ears. Oh, I hate hats with ears. I hate stupid hats. Do you remember that? You know, you know the hats? I think they are... Oh, like, they look like Aztec warriors or something like that. And they've got these bits of hair hanging down the side. They were very, very popular three years ago. I used to do my nut when I used to go out and see all these people going around with these hats with the long bits of hair. Oh, used to make me angry, that did. Um, we've had a complaint. A complaint, boys and girls. Now, usually, complaints usually end up in my house as toilet paper. You know, if you ever want to send anything nasty in, please feel free to do so, because I can always tear them up later and use them as lavatory paper, OK? That's what I think about complaint emails. Anyway, to but not this one. I'm slightly disappointed with myself on this one, I must admit. We were talking um, a couple of shows ago, because Tom is a little bit behind. You're a bit behind, aren't you, Tom? Do try and keep up with the rest of us. He's about four shows behind here with this email. I'm sure he is. Because I don't remember doing this story last week. Tom says, you have met... another." We were talking about people that I've met online uh, uh, in real life. And there's Millie and there's Suko and there's Terry Turner and there's a few other people. And of course, I forgot. I knew I'd forget someone. Tom writes, you have met another online friend in real life. Need I remind you of that evening I sang at your karaoke night? Yes, when we were in Hammersmith. I do remember Tom. Of course I remember that, Tom. Did we ever get any photos of that? Have we got a photo still, Tom? Don't know. I'm shocked and horrified that you've completely forgotten your old pal Tom from Chicago. Sobs uncontrollably. I suppose I should write more often. Yes, you should, Tom. See, it's your fault, really. You know, if you don't write in, 
then, then you know, how can I remember everyone all the time? Got to keep your name up there all the time. It's like when I put the posts on Facebook and things like that. When I put those posts up, you know, if I was to stop doing those posts, I'd soon disappear from your sad, lonely, pathetic life, wouldn't I? I would. No one would remember me. You've got to keep doing. You've got to keep banging away at it. Keep banging away as much as as much as possible. Right? Isn't that right, Mike? So, Tom, my apologies. Uh, Mike's just written it again. Loved your show, Chris. First time I've tuned in. As I work nights mostly. Same as me. Same as me, Mike. I will have to watch it after a long night in the hotel. Something to look forward to. Keep up the good work. Oh, and you're not fat. Looking forward to having a catch up in Hove. I'm looking forward to coming down to Hove. I really am. I won't leave it too late till I leave in the morning, though. Don't worry, Mike. OK, darling. Um, yeah, you can watch the recording, Mike. Uh, just to let you know, the long show, this, this show we're doing now, that goes up as well on the YouTube channel, but it does take quite a long to process that. It's not usually up until about 9 or 10 o'clock Saturday night. So that'd be perfect for you, Mike. You can just sit there. What is it you do in the hotel anyway? Are you are you reception? Hello, reception. Can I help? Can I help, reception? What is your position? Are you are you actually what you say that you're going to watch it at work? Have you got nothing to do then? Are you just going to sit in the office? Are you manager? Are you important person? Are you? Are you important? If I was one of your members of staff, would I have to come down and and do what you tell me to? Is that right, Mike? Are oh, you not doing anything in there? You're just, you, you just say, hello, everyone. You go in, your, go in your little room, lock the door, close the curtain and go back to sleep again in your chair. Or are you on reception? Reception, can I help? Reception, yes? Two more toilet rolls. What room, please? Thank you. We'll send someone up straight away. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, reception. So, what's happened to your bed sheets? Oh, have you? Oh dear. Oh well, well, we'll we'll have to send some more up. Oh, thank you. Oh, that must be awful having to change people's bed streets sheets when there's been accidents in them, Mike. No, Mike is night manager and he cooks good breakfast. Oh, Mike, do you do vegetarian breakfast? Because I'm a vegetarian bull now. Vegetarianable, I am. Do you do do you do vegetarian breakfast? You know, like Linda McCartney sausages. We like those and uh, baked beans. And please, what else can I have? Fried bread and uh, maybe tomatoes and hash brown. Can I have those things for breakfast, please? Please, Mike. Depending, of course, on my performance. Uh, anyway. On we go. Don't forget that email address if you want to. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is my email address, right? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Hello to James Dean. James Dean is in Manchester. Nice place, but I like Manchester. A lot of people are mad on the clubs and pubs out there. I'm not really a club or pub person anymore. I know that sounds stupid because that's what I do for a job. You know, but I don't go out to clubs and pubs. Very, very rarely. Very, very rarely. Unless, of course, you ask me, boys and girls. I might come out with you. OK? Might come out for a little go with you. Uh, James writes, Just realised Chris Redden's short daily videos are the perfect length to watch on the loo. James Dean, I do hope, I do hope you're not taking me into a toilet, James Dean, in Manchester. That's awful. I will not be watched in public toilets. Thank you. It's outrageous. Nathan says, it depends what you were doing. What do you mean, Nathan? It depends what you were doing. What are you doing, toilets, then? Uh, I, I dread to think, actually. Nathan, what are you doing in public toilets, dear? Have you ever been chucked out of public toilets by the police? I reckon that's what's happening to you, Nathan. Is it? You've been chucked out of public toilets by the police. And funnily enough, I was looking around on your Facebook page and I have found a photo. You in a toilet. 
Now, why... <laughs> Nathan, why, oh, why, is there a picture of you on the internet in a public toilet? Huh? <laughs> there are some strange people in this world, boys and girls, that want to take pictures of themselves in public toilets. Why, oh, why have you done that? You naughty boy, Nathan. Keep out of those toilets, dear. Out! <laughs> Gonna say hello to Brandon. Good morning, Brandon. Who saw my teeth brushing video. Did you see my teeth? You see, you didn't see it, did you? I told you, you've got to subscribe to the YouTube channel. See those short videos, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. You'll see them all there. They're all about two minutes long, except the Saturday ones. OK. And Brandon writes on the subject of the tooth brushing video. Hello there. After watching your YouTube video on Facebook, I would just like to say that you are not alone in making a mess of your mouth when you brush your teeth as I do. And I am sure many others do. There is nothing I like about my body, really, except for my teeth, which is why I took an interest in your video and why I look after them. Oh, Brandon, are you not happy about your body? I'm not happy about mine. Oh, I'm not. Do you know, once I had, it was really nice once in, when I was in my um, early 30s, I had the perfect body. I did. People told me, God, Chris, you are so good looking. That hasn't happened for a few years, sadly. But it did happen in the past. And I could sit there and close my eyes and think of the memories I had with that perfect body. Sadly, not anymore. Bit too fat now. <laughs> I am, not you. I am. Anyway, um, Brandon says, I like that name, Brandon. I also own an Oral-B Power Brush, the 1000 Professional Care Model. What have I got? I've got the Triumph. I would just like to add one final note is that you should do 30 seconds on each side of your mouth. Although I do that plus one minute on the fronts. Oh, I do. I do about <coughs> one, I do about four or five minutes altogether. In fact, the dentist has told me I must stop brushing my teeth so hard because the gums receding. That's what the dentist said. I, I know that that's not what's causing the gums to recede. Don't we, Mike? <laughs> Kind regards and happy brushing from Brandon Johnson, who is a friend of Richard Lerich. Richard Lerich. Thank you, Brandon. Nice to hear from you, sir. Appreciate anyone who sends in anything uh, email-wise or you put the comments on the videos. I always try and uh, read them all out, as long as there's not too many of them. Yeah, you can't be, just keep reading out the same uh, names all the time. Chris at United Kingdom Talk. .co.uk is the email address. Um, March says, do you have fruitcake there in the UK? My aunt used to send us one every year and it's very rich. We do have fruitcake, Marge. I, I must admit, I'm not a fan of really rich fruitcake. I don't mind a little bit of fruit in there, but things like Christmas puddings, Christmas cake, no, all that horrible stuff. It's all dark and horrible. Don't like it at all. A little bit of fruit, perhaps um, like a fruit bun with a few sultanas and currants in, something like that. I don't mind that, but nothing that's really rich and, th you know, Christmas pudding, you know, they're so heavy, aren't they? They're really heavy things. Uh... <laughs> there was some very naughty emails coming in today. I can't read a lot of these, you naughty persons. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Oh, Mike, you've subscribed to my YouTube channel. I'm so happy. Another little number. <laughs> Hello to Weird City Kid, who's uh, been watching the videos this week, who writes, Well, I freely admit, I didn't think you'd be exactly serious, nor did I imagine you'd be so, so quite Looney Tunes mad either. Good to see there are still people around that can have a good time without alcohol. I haven't drunk alcohol, Weird City Kid, for about 25 years. OK, the occasional glass of champagne on a plane. That's about it. I never drink alcohol out. Can't do anyway because I drive everywhere. But uh, And it all tastes vile to me. <coughs> I don't like the taste. I certainly don't like the taste of beer. Oh, it's vile. 
or lager, nasty stuff. Wine, got to tell you, all wine to me tastes like vinegar. That is the absolute truth. Every single glass of wine I've ever had in my life tastes like vinegar. I've just got this, actually. This, um, <coughs> like, leaflet with my latest visa statement. Oh, it's so high this month. So high. God. And it's a £60 wine voucher. Look at that. £60 wine voucher. We'd love you to try our wine, so here's a £60 wine treat. Now, I don't need any of your wines, I'm afraid, because I've got three lovely bottles of Sarsons vinegar in my cupboard. Won't be requiring your wine. God, is it one o'clock already? <laughs> Where does the time go? And then they send me 25% uh, off whiskies. Like, look at this, look at this. Um, classic malt whiskies. And there's two on the back here. One is £110. £110 for a bloody drink. People are off their heads playing this. If, have you ever had whiskey? Oh, it is vile. Vile stuff. Oh. I mean, you might as well just go and open a bottle of paraffin and drink that. Oh, it's horrible. Whiskey is horrible, horrible stuff. Oh no. I not I can just about have a tiny, tiny glass of Malibu, but that will after a while that's all sweet and sickly, isn't it? So no, I don't drink alcohol at all. Um Vibes Essex. Hello, Vibes Essex. Saw the toothbrushing video. Don't talk with your mouth full, Chris. Well sometimes you have to talk with your mouth full, Vibes Essex. You, pardon? You do. Richard Le Rich, bonsoir, Richard Le Rich, says, keep your mouth closed. I know it's hard for you, but it is possible, love. Looks more like the Channel Tunnel with a bit of rabies thrown in. I'm glad you don't buy it. These are all writing on the subject of the toothbrush video. All I did was go in the bathroom and brush my teeth. People have gone mad on this particular video. Marge says, I've never heard of electric toothbrush, just a toothbrush, yes. Thank you for correcting me and pointing it out, Marge. You put too much toothpaste on. You have rabies. All you need is ten up and ten down. Yes, I should know. She's, she's one to talk much. She's got no teeth. She's t I can't believe you're telling me how to brush my teeth when you haven't got any. Once she said... I'm sure... Didn't you send a video once and you actually took them out? Your teeth. As, they, as, they, as the suction released off your gums. <laughs> uh, yes. <coughs> too much toothpaste, people are saying. No, as a, no, I like to have a lot of tooth. You've got to have enough toothpaste on there. My niece, Tracy Clifford, writes in. George, now George is my great nephew. One of my great nephews, OK? George loved the toothbrushing video. He didn't stop laughing. And by the end of it, he got up and you got kisses and cuddles when he, when he took the phone to his heart. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. I'm glad you liked it, George. George the toddler. Mm, 12, 13, 14 months old, George. Is. I should be seeing him in a couple of weeks when I go and visit to my sister for Christmas. I'm so excited. Um, Ian Duff in Canada. Or are you in Spain? I think you're in Spain now. I think that is entirely normal, Chris, uh, to make so much mess of your mouth when you're brushing your teeth for someone who is talking and brushing their teeth and making a video at the same time. <laughs> Ian also writes, on the subject of the video where I showed people my new clothes horse from Amazon, $9.99. We love Amazon. We love it. Click and collect. Or click, no, sorry, one click ordering. And it comes, just comes in the post. It's fantastic. Ian writes, Chris, you've got to be kidding. You're scraping the bottom of the barrel, buddy. Putting a bathing suit on the clothes horse is not equal to entertainment. Well, he didn't actually use the word entertainment. He used another word. I cannot say the word not on this programme. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, oh, Mike says, rum makes you what? 
Whiskey makes you frisky. Brandy makes you randy. Bring it on. I don't drink any of that stuff. I hope you're not going to spike my drinks, Mike. We won't have to, to be honest. But No, sorry. Um, Weird City Kid writes... <laughs> On the subject of, I did a, a did a, a a video with my nephew, Jimmy, when I was up there up in Lincolnshire a couple of weeks. Oh, was it last week? Week before last now, because we took the little children to this um theme park for the under tens called Sundown. It was fantastic, Fan best one of the best days out I ever had. I was only there for a couple of hours, but to have a, you know someone little holding your hand, uh, I, I held George's hand. He's the one who's um, yeah. 12, 13, 14, 14 months old now. So I held his little hand and we went walking. And to, to, I just, I can't explain it. To have a little child's hand like that and helping him to walk through this theme park was, was amazing. It was totally amazing. Uh, but my other nephew, he didn't, wasn't able to come because he had to work. Jimmy, who's 16. I did a little interview with him because Tom Daly... See, Tom Daly's gay now, isn't he? He's come back as... Oh, bye, bye, isn't he? And um, I did have to ask Jimmy if he was Tom Daly's new boyfriend, and he did say categorically no, because he likes girls, Jimmy. He does, he's a straight boy. And, um, but at one point I was talking to him, and he had his hand on his hip, so I did have to say to him, take your hand off your hip, Jimmy, that's how I started. Weird City Kid found that very funny. Weird City Kid also says, you have an awesome family. Your sister is a riot, because my sister makes an appearance as well. That's when we did the Primark video. We did a little video in Primark while I was up there, which is one of the most amazing shopping experiences I've ever had. Cheap, dear, cheap. You come out with two great big bloody bags of clothes for like 30 quid. How do they do that? Well, we all know how they do that. They pay someone awful wages, you know. These people in India and China who make stuff for us, they get dreadful wages. Not particularly good living conditions. And it's difficult, you know, I don't want them to live like that. I really don't. But other people would say, well, if they didn't have those jobs, they'd have nothing. That's no excuse for the large companies, is it, really? But then we'd have to pay a bit more. Difficult, isn't it? Difficult. <coughs> Excuse me. Weird City Kid also says when he sees uh, myself and my best mate Ron doing videos, because Ron is often, uh, not often, but sometimes in the videos, and we did one yesterday. We did one yesterday at the Hilton Hotel, actually, where we had a Christmas dinner on Thursday. And you can find that once again. Go to uh, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK to see all last week's, all the, all the videos are on there, all last week's. Look for the Hilton Hotel one. And uh, Weird City Kid says, I do like smiley people. You two are nice and smiley. I think that's why I like your videos. You always bring a smile to my face. It's quite true. Smiles like yawns and leprosy are infectious. <laughs> Oh, Christ, I haven't got leprosy now, have I? Let me just check and see if anything's fallen off. I'm having a bit of... There's a few bits of skin hanging around me now. <laughs> um, and it says, So funny, you look like the Joker from Batman at the end. That's on the, on the toothbrushing video. I make a mess too, but I think I use too much paste. You must watch the toothbrushing video, boys and girls, OK? That seems to be quite popular, that one. Uh, Richard writes constantly hardly says a word sums Chris up to a T Croydon also has a Hilton Hotel is that right Richard Croydon has a Hilton Hotel I think it's, it's going to be up and coming Croydon isn't it I mean it's a dump at the moment don't go to Croydon for God's sake girls it's awful. Don't go to Croydon. However, it's coming up. They're going to get a Westfield shopping centre. Westfield shopping centre. Marge writes on the subject of yesterday's video, the one in the Hilton Hotel. You do know Nelson Mandela passed away, right? Well, yeah, of course I do, Marge. What a strange thing to ask, dear. What made you think I wouldn't know that? Is it the humour bit at the end that you didn't quite understand? Because there was a guy sitting at the table. 
Yeah, I'll just tell you quickly, it's a little bit of yesterday's video, Friday, Friday the 13th of September, which once again you can watch at youtube.com forward slash Chris Red UK. And I do mention Nelson Mandela in it. Yes. Um, okay, so finally today, finally, a little email from James Bates. Good morning, James. Who says, hi, Chris, you wanted to know what an Acer liquid was. Yes, because um, I noticed that James sends uh, emails often and it says at the bottom, sent from my Acer liquid. He said, it's a new no mobile. I bought the old phone. I had di It had died of old age. Well, we all do at some point, James. Not me. I shan't be dying of old age. I intend to be talking for at least the next 500 years on this program who knows where it will end up you know this program is global we are sent around the world via transmitters we are international and global we go throughout outer space or throughout our own milky way via the hubble telescope and throughout outer interstellar space via transponders on Voyagers 1 and 2. Extraterrestrials are actually watching and probably presenting this program. I am indeed from another planet, as you know. Um, James says, sometimes I email you on the move. Well, not on a push bike or something like that. It's very dangerous, James. Please don't text and drive. Yes, I said, oh, I, there was someone texting and driving the other day, actually. And I knew he was, right, because he was, he, he was going over like 15, 20 mile an hour and there was nothing in front. It was a cube building. So I overtook him and he's texting at the bloody wheel. I thought, should I take a photo? But knowing that, you know, I thought, I'll take a photo, send that to the police from my car. And they say, why are you taking a photo while you're driving? I would have been the one to get in trouble. That's how it works in this bloody country. You know, someone does something wrong, you provide evidence and you get done. Like a burglar breaks into your house, you hit them over the head and they die. It's your fault. Why is that my fault? Don't come in my house then. Simple as that. <clears throat> James does indeed suffer from arthritis. Oh, that's very painful, James. Uh, sorry about that, my friend. I like some of the daily so Joes you do. It was nice seeing Katie the cat again. Yes, Katie made an appearance in Monday's show this week where I told the joke, the, the joke about the Catholic priest. As for the Barry Manilow concert, I hope you get to see it soon. As I heard, the USA is suffering one of its worst winters and sub-zero temperatures and thick snow. Not in Florida, dear. They don't have snow in Florida. It should be about 65, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, about 15 to 20 centigrade when I go there with my nephew Jimmy in January. Uh, while I'm there, incidentally, my house is being decorated. Oh, that's what I was going to tell you. I'm very excited because on Monday they are doing my new windows. Yes. Inside of my house is a brick wall. But I'm at the end. So I'm having two windows put into that brick wall. So they have to make openings first. They've got to make big holes in the wall. And then, and then, then the bloke from the council has to come and check they're doing it all right. And then they put the windows in, and it's done. Fantastic! Very excited. Two new windows because it's a bit dark in the hallway, and I'm having a second window in my bedroom. Very good price. Two thousand pound for that. I thought that was a very good price. So for that, they put towers up and scaffold in, and they they um, make the holes in the side of the wall, and then put this, what's it, lintel thing in, put a lintel in, and they put the windows in, take it all down again, done, and make it good. £2,000. I thought that was really good price for that. Didn't you? Do you? I, I thought it was good. So I'm having that done. And then while I'm away, Ronnie is moving in here, and he is uh, arranging for those, for the hall and my bedroom to be decorated. And new carpets. Fab. And when we come back from our holiday, hopefully it will all be finished. Isn't that great? Um, as for speed cameras, I hope they are abolished, says James. What is their purpose? 
It's like a speed camera is not going to stop a speeding motorist having an accident. No, well, I mean, yes, although I, I... Oh, dear. I seem to have got flashed on my way to my sister's. And I'm waiting to hear from that. Well, I did get a letter today from the Lincolnshire Police last week, so they obviously had a camera in that particular box. So it looks like I'm going to get done for speeding. I was doing 38 in a 30 at 4 o'clock in the morning. You decide what you can about that. As for parking enforcement cameras, the people that operate these work on an extensive bonus, which I totally disagree with. It doesn't solve the parking problem. In fact, a few times I've seen a parking enforcement officer being assaulted because of it. Well, we can't tell people to go out and assault parking officers, can we? Not a nice thing to do. But when you get a ticket... It's tempting, isn't it? But you mustn't attack parking officers. They are, oh, just doing my job, mate. Oh, oh, just doing my job. Will you be spending Christmas with Katie the cat this year from James? No, I shall be going up to my sister's, but I'm only gone for two days, so uh, she gets fed. Ronnie uh, is uh, uh, feeding the cat for me. Ronnie will be coming over at various points in the day and feeding my cat. All righty. Now, have we done everything today? Bum, 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 bum. Think I have. Oh. Marge says, what makes those cracker things you pull go pop? Oh, they've got a little little paper thing in there, Marge. Have you never pulled a cracker? It's, it's um, there's, a, there's this paper thing in and it's joined and I think there's some sort of um, substance which causes a very small explosion. So you pull them apart, they rub against each other, and it goes pop. And we like crackers. Are you getting crackers last night? No dinner, no crackers. No one danced. I'm a bit disappointed, really. But it was an easy night. I can't complain. Right, that's it for me today, boys and girls. Thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, for the show. Don't forget the email address. My email address is Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk you want to send an email about anything at all chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk all right um my facebook if you want to join me on facebook i always put all the posts of where i'm working the next video always goes on there my facebook is facebook.com forward slash chris reason uk there's twitter twitter is twitter.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK as well. All right. Thanks so much for watching and listening, boys and girls. I'll see you here live next Saturday at 12 o'clock UK time. If you want to find the link to that, go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. That's where you'll find all the long shows with the audio versions as well. There are no audio versions of the short videos, okay? Because they are quite visual. It would be pointless doing that. Uh, the only audio versions are of Saturday's live show. You'll always find those at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. At the top is the link to the live show on Saturdays, all right? So just click that and uh, watch on Saturdays at 12 o'clock UK time and join in and everything else. And once again, you'll find all the little short videos uh, as well as the long ones at youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Click the subscribe button there if you want to subscribe. It's all free, okay? Uh, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. You have a lovely weekend. Thanks for watching and listening.